part of accepting payments on your store is of course going to be charging the appropriate taxes for purchases for which taxes are relevant. Setting up taxes on our store is going to be a multi-part process, but we're going to start by going to stores and here under the taxes group, we're going to click tax rules. Now setting up tax rules can be a little confusing at first, but I'm going to try to clear things up for you. One thing that might help you understand everything is that any given tax rule consists of three elements, a product class, a customer class, and a tax rate. The product class is a property that belongs to the product, and the customer class is a property that belongs to the customer. A tax rule takes a tax rate and applies it to a combination of customer class and product class. Now that may sound like a lot to digest, but we're gonna walk through the whole process of setting up tax rules. So currently, we don't have any tax rules. Our store will not charge taxes to any purchases. Now, that's probably not going to be quite right in most cases. So we're going to click add a new tax rule. And here's where we're going to start setting up a new tax. Now, obviously, you're going to have to look into your tax laws to determine who to tax, which orders to tax, how much to tax, and whether certain products are taxed different amounts. But once you have that information, this is where you're going to start creating those rules. So I'm going to say for my store, I'm just setting up a basic Alabama sales tax. So we're going to call this rule AL sales tax. Then you're going to need to define or select an already defined tax rate. We currently have out of the box, US Canada, US New York. Neither of those are going to apply to us. We're going to add a new tax rate. We're going to have this little form slide in. For tax identifier, that's simply the name of this tax rate. We can just kind of go with what we're already saying and call this AL tax. Now there are a number of ways you can set up the tax. You can set it up per zip code, per state, per country. If it's something that applies to the whole entire country, then keep in mind star in either here or the zip code field stands for anything. So if we just do star star United States, that means any zip code in any state in the United States will have this tax applied to it. You can also do partial zip codes. You can say any zip code starting with three five and then put a star, any zip code starting with three five will have this rate applied to it. Since this tax rate is for the entire state of Alabama, we're gonna say any zip code in Alabama. Of course, we're working in the United States in our example. And I don't know what the actual tax rate is for Alabama, but let's say it's 8.5%. So we'll just type 8.5 right there and then click save. Now we need to make sure that we have that new tax rate selected as it is and not something else and not multiple tax rates, unless of course there are multiple tax rates that need to apply. In our case, that's not true right now. So we're going to just select AL tax. Now we're going to go and open up additional settings. Here we can define or select the customer classes that the tax applies to. We'll take a little bit more in depth look at this later. But right now, out of the box, we have retail customer. That's just going to be your basic customer. We're going to stick with that. For product tax class, these are the type of products that this tax rule is going to apply to. In this case, we have taxable goods selected. That's sort of the default generic, any product that needs to be taxed type rule or class rather. So we're going to stick with that. Currently, all of the products on our website are set up as taxable goods. So they'll all be applied for this tax rule. In just a minute, We'll add a new tax class to a different tax rule so I can show you how that works. But for just the basic sales tax, we're just going to say retail customers and taxable goods. Then we have priority here. Now, when you're setting up the priority for a tax rule, that determines the order that the tax is applied. We have this little description here. Tax rates at the same priority are added. Others are compounded. What that means is that if we have, say, two or three tax rules, 
all with priority zero, then all of those tax rates are going to be applied to the base cost of the product. So for example, if we have a product that costs $100 and we have three tax rules that all apply a 5% tax to that product, if they all have the same priority, then we're going to take 5% of 100 and then we're going to do that two more times for the other two tax rules, 5% of 100 again, and then 5% of 100 again, and the total, including tax, is going to be $115. That's pretty straightforward. However, if they had different priorities, then what would happen is the tax rule with the first priority would apply the 5%, and then you would have $105. Then the next tax rule in line would apply the 5% to that $105, and then the one coming after that would apply the tax rate to whatever that total was of adding 5% to $105. It would add 5% to that total. So that's how the priorities work. Now, another thing to take note of here is that the lower number here means the higher priority. In other words, priorities with the lower number are calculated first, and then as the numbers go up, those numbers are added afterwards. So if we have one tax with $5, or 5% rather, in a priority zero, and then another one with priority five, then the one with priority zero would be calculated first, and then the tax rate with priority five would be calculated according to what the percentage was already added to of the original product. That's what it means by compounded, as opposed to be added. It calculates the priority, then goes on to the next one, takes that subtotal, and creates a new subtotal, essentially, internally, with the next priority tax. Then we also have calculate off subtotal only. It's not necessary in most cases to check this box, because we don't really want to calculate taxes off of the subtotal, even though it might seem like we do. Really what we want are the taxes to be applied or calculated based on the products. This is especially important for orders that have multiple items that fall under different tax rules. You want each item's tax to be applied appropriately rather than the subtotal of the entire order. Then sort order, that's not really important. This is simply where this tax rule is going to show up on the back end of our website. It doesn't have anything to do with what the customer sees or how the tax is charged. We also have import and export options here. That gets a little bit more advanced, but if you want to look into it, essentially you can create a spreadsheet, a comma separated values spreadsheet with tax rates and import those into your site if you have something to do that with. So we have this basic sales tax rule set up now for Alabama. We're going to save the rule. Let's add one more very quickly. Let's say that for whatever reason in Alabama, Sumatran goods are charged an extra 5% tax. Again, who knows why? So we'll call this AL Sumatran tax. We'll add a new tax rate. We can just do AL Sumatra. Any zip code in Alabama. And the rate is 5% save that, open up our additional settings. These are for retail customers, but they're going to be for a different tax class of goods. This is not going to apply to just any taxable good. This is only going to apply to Sumatran goods. So we need to add a new tax class in that case. So we'll add that and write Sumatran goods. Click the check mark over here and it'll pop up. And we need to deselect taxable goods because again, we only want this to apply to Sumatran goods, not just any generic taxable good on the site. Well, they say the priority for this is zero. It's added to the subtotal rather than compounded. And everything else is just fine. So we're gonna save that rule. And now since this Alabama tax on Sumatran goods is supposed to be in addition to the regular Alabama sales tax. We need to go back to this Alabama sales tax rule, open up our additional settings, 
and add Sumatran goods to our Alabama sales tax. If we don't do this, this may be a little bit confusing, but just bear with me. If we don't do this, then the regular Alabama sales tax will not be applied to any product marked as a Sumatran goods. In other words, if we have a Sumatran good, but we didn't add the Alabama sales tax, we didn't add this tax class to the Alabama sales tax rule, then Sumatran goods would only have that Sumatran sales tax applied to them and not the Alabama sales tax that we're also setting up. But in our case, Sumatran goods need to have both. So we need to make sure that this Alabama sales tax is applied to Sumatran goods as well. That's a very important thing to keep in mind as you add additional product tax classes to your website. So once we've done that, let's save our rule. And then in order for this Sumatran tax to actually apply to our Sumatran goods, we need to change the tax class of that product and any other products that this tax rate applies to. In our case, that's just one. So we're gonna go to products and catalog. And we're gonna scroll down to find our Sumatra select. We will click on that to edit it. And right here, close to the top, we see tax class. Currently, this is under taxable goods. Now that we've added a new tax class, we have Sumatran goods. So we'll select that and click save. And now once you've done all this and set up your tax information, Magento does not say that you need to flush your cash. And in most cases you don't. However, I have come across situations where tax rates weren't applied properly until I did flush the cash. So just to be safe, to keep ourselves out of trouble, let's click on system and cash management. And from here, we're just gonna click the big orange flush Magento cash button. Now that that's done, let's check this out and see if everything works properly. So we're gonna click on our name and we'll open the customer view in a new tab. And specifically, we want to make sure that the Sumatran goods are working appropriately. So we'll find our Sumatra select wherever that may be on your page. Click add to cart. And once we've done that, it might take just a second as you saw, but then we'll have a little one next to our cart here. We can click on here, go to checkout. And you can just fill in some dummy information and click next. And then we'll see that we have our cart subtotal, our shipping, which we'll talk about a little bit more later, and then the applied tax. And if you do the math on this, then you'll see that the 8.5% tax as well as the additional 5% tax are added here. And the math comes out correctly and our tax rules are working properly. Everything's great. One more thing before we go, back on the back end of our website, you may have noticed over here on stores under taxes, we also have a section here called tax zones and rates. If you click on that, this is nothing big, but it is good to know about. This is just a more centralized place to view your tax zones and rates and edit those as needed. So it's not anything that you need to configure independently, but it is an easy place if you need to change something just to go here click on whatever tax rate that you want to play around with and change the rate, change the place where it's applied or whatever.